few minutes you get to drive the Mustang Mach E GT on some of the best roads in the world on a beautiful sunny day. Have you ever questioned your choices in career? Well, not today. Um, I want to talk to you about the continuous innovation of this vehicle. I think most of you know we, it wasn't developed in the normal way here. Um, and it continues to be developed in a different way. We're constantly listening to social media and feedback. And we had the benefit, this car coming a little later than the premium, we've had been able to put a lot of new things into it already. The great thing is that gets pushed back to the vehicles that we've already sold. And you'll be able to try the Blue Cruise. I recommend you try it on the Route 1, the Run 1 part. Um, I love it on traffic jams. You can press the button and not, I, I didn't touch control for an hour as long as you're paying attention. That camera's looking at your eyes because our research says if a car's semi-autonomous for a long time, people start looking around, they're just humans. The most important thing is to watch their eyes. So the camera watches your eyes, even if you've got sunglasses on. It still works, and as long as you're doing that and you're on a blue cruise enabled area, which is 130,000 miles of, of, of area, that means it's good road and we know it's good quality. The system will be very stable and will be running as long as your hands are off the wheel. So, now that update ability, that will run now, we'll be rolling out that system already, it's in production now, and it will roll out to vehicles that we've already sold, it's something like 90% of them, plus the new software. So you'll see things like the Sketch app, there's a colouring book there for the kids, and, and more games and things will still start to come through as well. Most people charge at home, and they're very happy with that, it's a great way to own the car. But some people are doing longer journeys, and they want to charge a bit higher up. We, we can't cap them at 80%. Why? Because in all conditions, all over the country, all over the world, we want to make sure your car, the battery lasts for its life. So we guarantee 80%, uh, eight years, at least 70% of it when it was brand new range. Of course, we achieve much higher than that, but that's what we actually warranty. So we're protecting people for that. Well, we learn more over time, and when we see customers actually wanting to charge a bit higher when they're on a journey, so that they can get that maximum use. It is one of the longest range cars available, so they want to make use of it. So we're going to change the vehicles to allow you to charge up to 90%, and we're going to have that in production by the end of the year, and we can roll it out to all of the vehicles in our fleet. And that, so it's an example of a request made, and then we can react to that request. We're also working on speed, and again, we protect the customer for that life of battery for a long time. But really, some of the conditions people are in are not in the most extreme conditions at all times. So we're going to add more intelligence about what condition you're really in to give you a little bit more. We really enjoy it. We get better feedback through social media than we ever got through surveys taking them much longer. It means we can react and we can make the cars better. I'm telling you, we're only getting started. We just launched it. We have many, many more things coming. But the best piece I'd say for last, and this is why I work at Ford and have worked at Ford for 29 years, is the price. This vehicle's 59,000 minus seven and a half incentive. That's a $51,000 car that outruns every childhood hero car I ever knew. And the performance edition 64,900 with magnetic suspension and all the other features you, you have in there. That's what I'm most proud of. It's, insanely good for that price point. And we're building the whole infrastructure for the future. So you've seen we've announced recently $30 billion of investment to 25. I mean, that's a significant amount of money. And that's because we've built confidence that now is the time in the market. The response for the F-150 Lightning has been crazy and, and has not stopped. That hose pipe's still running. We're over 150,000 that we announced at the moment and it just keeps going and going and going. We're also seeing a huge demand for the mach -E, And that's before we announced, uh, launched the best one, the GT. Part of that is because of what customers are saying. And the thing, one of the things I'm most proud about is a JD Power Appeal Award we got just a couple of weeks ago, because that's the customers, the customers telling us. And as Lisa mentioned, over 90% say they would recommend it to a friend, which I, you know, is, a, is a, really amazing for me. So we've been concentrating on our icons because people recognize the icon, they know what it does, and our mantra is it always does something that gas never did. It seems to be resonating with people. So we're carrying, but, but no, none more than the iconic Mustang mach -E GT. And you see it as soon as that badge comes. And that badge lights up. The reason it lights up 
is to tell you it's something different, something special. I can't tell you how difficult it was to make it light up. I'll talk you a bit to you about it later. It was really difficult, but it does. But I defy anyone walking up to that car at night with that lit on, if you're with friends and family, that no one's going to mention something. There's no chance of that happening. And today I'm going to introduce you to a little bit of the powertrain and expand on the, some of the functions of the battery a little bit. So when Mach-E started out, it was a clean sheet of paper, and there's nothing more an engineer likes than a clean sheet of paper to start with. It just makes our job just a little bit easier. In this situation, we were able to optimize the battery for this vehicle, which is a great place to start. For the GT, we've, had to make, we've made a few additional changes. We've upgraded some of the electronics and some of the wiring to handle the additional current that goes to the system to deliver the 34 extra foot-pounds of torque. Um, in addition to that, some of the other features about the battery is we're using the uh, lithium ion uh, nickel metal cobalt batteries, NCM batteries, cells, uh, which are common with the base program. Uh, the cells will also be common with the Transit E program that will be coming up a little later this, or the E Transit program coming up a little later this year. And why that's good is it allows us the ability to have a common cell, which helps up with scale, and it also gives us the chance to make service and repair just that much easier. Speaking of that, uh, a big function of Ford's experience is 100 years of assembling a vehicle goes into this also. By making a battery that's easy to assemble, uh, and that's good for us and the customer, we have fewer uh, parts inside the pack, which is again good for reliability and service. Speaking of reliability and quality, that's a key function of the battery. We really go into designing the battery for, in its, for its entire life. We test it to extreme conditions. We test from minus 40 degrees all the way to 135 degrees to make sure the battery performs under all those situations. We test for simulated millions of miles of uh, real, road, real conditions and, and road conditions, and we test at uh, under harsh conditions and underwater. Uh, really, the battery. Our goal is to make sure the battery is reliable for its entire life. The battery itself is actually a sealed case. It's actually protected water. It's watertight so that elements can't get inside the battery, which can lead to premature failure. And for the event of safety, we've actually the battery case itself is surrounded in uh, crash-absorbing rails on the outside to absorb the energy in the event of a crash so we don't impinge on the battery cells themselves. Um, but the battery design business is just part of it. It's actually part of an inclusive system that Ford's working on. We've recently introduced Ion Park, which is a research team that is uh, dedicated to working on uh, battery cell advancements going forward. And then Ford just recently also uh, joined forces with Redwood Materials, which is a recycling team. And the idea is that we're going to recycle batteries that are coming back from the field or in manufacturing with the goal of uh, reducing the amount of material that's put in landfills or actually has to be mined out of the field again to actually create a circular economy for the battery. And then there's, of course, there's the stuff that's in the middle where Ford specializes, and that's manufacturing batteries. Just last week, we announced uh, uh, three new battery facilities of 43 gigawatt hours each. That's $11.4 billion investment in North America to create North American jobs and battery cells for North America. It really shows that Ford's fully committed to uh, this, uh, you know, battery electric vehicles going forward. To expand on the powertrain, we'll turn it over to Donna and give you a little more details about some other features of the powertrain. The GT, we really push the EV powertrain, you know, push the boundaries of the powertrain even more. Um, we're an all-wheel drive vehicle. We have um, permanent magnetic dual motors. We've actually upgraded the, the front motor from the base vehicle. And as uh, Heather indicated, we do have unique tires both on the base and in the performance edition. So really, these features enable us to use the most power out of the battery, right? You can see it in our numbers. For the base, we get about 480 um, peak horsepower on both, 600 foot-pounds of torque, uh, on the base with a zero to 60 time of 3.8 seconds. Now that Mustang GT performance, we utilize unique calibration, the unique 20 inch Pirelli tire. We get that torque level up to 634 and uh, 3.5 zero to 60 time. So one of our challenges is managing both the power and boost. So what we've done is when you depress the accelerator, <coughs> we actually have a five second boost come on to help get you that acceleration. Now, we also, on the cluster, 
put in a boost gauge. So when you're out there driving, you can see it. So you always know exactly how much power you're getting to the wheels, and then even on regen, how much you're sending out um, to the wheels on diesel. Now with that, you know, performance, spirited drive, as, as Heather indicated, we didn't give up on range. So if you look over on, on Brett's chart, right, that GT base came in at 270 and the performance edition 260, well within what we want to deliver or what the customer expectation is. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Matt and you can talk about charging. Thank you, Donna. Thank you to all of you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Matt Stover. I manage our charging and energy services business for Ford. Um, we recognize that one of the biggest inhibitors for our customer to transition to an electrified lifestyle is this issue of charging. It's new, right? As humans, adopting anything new is a challenge. Uh, one of the things that we found, though, uh, in our human-centered research is that once the customer solves this problem for themselves, charging can actually be a form of value and a source of you know, convenience and comfort. You know, uh, my wife right now, uh, every time I leave the house for an extended period of time for work, takes my car. One of the key reasons she drives my car, she doesn't have to go to the gas station. It's a form of convenience and value for her. So uh, what we are really trying to do with the strategies that we're putting in place is trying to make it as effortless as possible for our customers to accomplish their charging needs so that they can transition to um, our electrified vehicles. So I think as many of you folks know, most people's charging is going to be done at home. Our research says about 65 to 85 percent of your charging is going to be done at home. So we felt we had to make this as simple as possible. I'm sure all of you have tried to get onto Amazon and buy a charger. It's a confusing and stressful process, right? Like, what's an amp? What's a volt? What's a kilowatt? What's this brand? What's that brand? What price makes sense? We've tried to make it super simple. With the GT, we're going to include the Ford Mobile Charger, which is effectively a 48 amp, um, 240 volt, or sorry, 32 amp, 240 volt product. This is a very capable uh, charger for the vehicle. It's included with the vehicle. Uh, on an hourly basis, it'll give you about 20 miles of charge. This will be fine for most people every day. It's a fully warranted product. Uh, for those customers that have uh, the desire for a faster charging experience or a connected charging experience where they want to gain insights on their energy consumption, or maybe you have to install your charger on the outside of your house and you'd like the security of locking and unlocking the charger, we offer the Ford Home Connected Charge Station. That's a 48 amp charger and it'll give you 28 miles of charge per hour. It's a terrific charging solution. To make the installation of these things simpler, we've worked with our partners at QMerit to arrange installation service for our customers. It's a really simple experience. You go onto your app, you ask a few questions, you take a couple, a couple pictures, you get a quote back, super simple, no stress. We recognize though we couldn't stop there, right? People are gonna want to use this vehicle as their primary vehicle. They're gonna travel, they're gonna have incidental needs for charging on the road. So we've created the Blue Oval Charge Network. We used to call this the Ford Pass Charge Network. This is the largest network of networks in North America offered by OEMs. Uh, currently, we have about 19,500 uh, charging stations and about 63,000 plugs, and that is growing. And um, with each vehicle, what we will do is we'll offer two years of access to the network plus 250 kilowatt hours of energy on the Electrify America network. And the reason we do that is we want our customers to understand that this vehicle can be their primary vehicle. There are no exceptions. So we like the vehicle though, <clears throat> the vehicle gets better every day, we're gonna make our network get better every day as well. Over the course, we're committed to two things over the course of the next several years. Number one is to continue to grow the network. We have a lot of federal money that's coming into the, net, into the infrastructure business in North America. We are going to grow right along with that. And number two, we want to ensure that when our customers plan a navigation or look for a charger utilizing a Ford experience, that they will be routed to a charger that works for the vehicle. We right now are collecting uh, connected uh, vehicle data off the vehicles to analyze problematic chargers across North America. 
Um, and we are working with our partners to address these issues uh, with these problematic chargers. Over the course of the near term, we're gonna launch a program called the Charge Angels. We're actually gonna send people out into the field and test chargers. We wanna make sure that when our customers are routed to a charger, that it's gonna work for the vehicle. We're taking this very seriously. We wanna treat our customers like family. It's very important. So the last piece of this is you have to bring this whole experience together on the customer's terms. We, we're gonna use our Ford Pass app to create a connected service for our customers to manage all their charging needs related to the vehicle. Uh, within the context of the Ford Pass app, we offer the ability of our customers to locate chargers, uh, pay for charging, gone are the days of having five different RFID cards, four different accounts. You can do it all in, the, all in one, one account, one credentialing. And uh, you can plan a, a trip with an integrated trip plan, with an integrated charging plan to make it very, very simple for our customers. We're also taking advantage of the connected capability of this vehicle to deliver uh, products and services that deliver convenience and competence for the customer. A great example of that would be plug and charge. We were one of the first OEMs to deliver that and make that operable in North America. And number two is our intelligent range. We want our customers to feel that that range calculation is as high quality as it could be. We're using their behavioral data, we're using weather, we will be using traffic, we will be using topology to improve the calculation of that range. So when you get into a Ford vehicle, you can trust that range calculation. I'll take that up. Ford, by design, wanted to make it a holistic experience and personalized. So, everyone that usually, you know, pretty much everyone has a phone with them, they get in the car and away they go. But wouldn't it be great if this phone was integrated completely into your vehicle? So now think about it, it's me, my phone and my car, we become one. Now Matt talked about the Ford Pass app for the benefits of charging, but Ford Pass really can unlock a lot of other benefits to you. So the first thing I'll try to tell you about is that here, I have it on my phone. My car is actually in Ohio right now because I'm here and, and I know that I have 99% state of charge, 274 miles on my premium, and uh, my husband has it. How do I know it? Because it tells me where the location of the vehicle is. Now, I'm not creeping on him, but it's kind of, I guess, I, he's driving my car today, <laughs> right? Okay, no big deal, but let's say I want to view chargers. Is the chargers going to be based off where the car's at or where I'm at? When I hit view chargers, it's telling me of the chargers right here in proximity to me because I think I'm with the car. And when it does that, it's like literally saying right down the street, there's 8 of 11 available, DC fast charger. I can say the free to charge, oh, here are the free to charge ones, and it's right here real time with me. When I get in the car, it'll translate itself into the Sync 4A system, so you can see it there too. But before I get on my journey, I just wanted to know it was full. I got an alert saying your car's fully charged, or maybe I just need to lock the car. I went to bed, I'm like, did I lock the car? Oh, here, I can just lock it right now. Hold the button, and I lock the car. I unlock the car. Now, one of my very favorite features, it's called phone as a key. This is now my key fob to get into the car. My household has my husband and my daughter. They each have their phone set up with phone as a key. They don't need the key fob. So basically, when I walk up to my car, from the grocery store out of the building, the car lights up. It welcomes me. The side view mirrors unfold. A light little lights come up on the front headlights or on the back tail lamps. It knows it's me. It's already unlocked. I push the button, I get in, throw my phone on the inductive charger right there, and away I go. It remembers who I am, where I went, how often I call mom or dad, my normal routes, shows me my efficiencies, my radio stations that I have planned, my memory seats. It's me getting the car. My daughter gets in, the same thing happens for her, but it's her. Now when both of us are in the car, who trumps who? Because we all have personal profiles, we can just say which profile is the one that we're gonna connect to, and then she can stream her music or I can stream my music, whichever. But the point is the car is gonna learn us and it's going to be, become me and my car and how I like to drive. It's going to show my efficiency for how I handle my, my battery or how crazy I am for a great driver or not a great driver. But the point is it's all relevant to the person. And I think that is something that's transformational because we've never had a vehicle itself become me. It's always just been I get in the car, turn the key, push the button, but it doesn't represent me. Now it represents